Okay. Hmm. Okay. Good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Our joint meeting will start soon. So, may I have our attention to this following video. Thank you. And let us have a big round of applause to welcome the president of Pekanbaru Toastmasters Club, Toastmaster Pipit. Okay, thank you for your warmest welcome, Toastmaster Seni. Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the joint meeting of Pekanbaru Toastmasters Club and Bineka Online Toastmaster Club. This is our first meeting in this one for both clubs. Okay, as we are in still in Ramadan, uh, in Lebaran vibe, so I would like to say Eid Mubarak for all Muslims who celebrate Eid Al-Fitr. Okay, and for those who have a holiday, I would like to say enjoy your holiday, everyone. Yeah, so this evening, because here is evening in Pekanbaru right now, we are going to have this meeting, the joint meeting of Pekanbaru Toastmasters Club and Bineka Online Toastmasters Club. In this joint meeting, we came up with a theme of are you an ideal team player? As we all know, in Toastmasters, we're not only learning how to deliver speech as a public speaker, but we also learn how to be a good, a good leader and also a good communicator. So here, we are going to find out, are we the one of a good team player or not? And our word of the day is alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I would like to say welcome to everyone. And I noticed that there were some members here joining us in our meeting today. So I would like to say welcome to distinguished Toastmasters to Harjo Setio. Thank you for coming and visiting us tonight. And also we've got um, some other guests like Juliana Yang, welcome. And then Noel and the other guests who haven't renamed themselves. So please name yourself. And also, oh, Pak Herman. Okay, yeah. yeah. We've got Pak Herman as well. Thank you, Pak Herman, for visiting yeah. us. Yeah, and I would like to say welcome to the members of Vineka Online Toastmasters Club. We've got Sani, SDSAA. Welcome. And then Renra, the president. You're not to forget the president, uh, Ben. And then we've got, um, who else? Severin. And then Robin, Rudy and the other members of Gineca Online Toastmasters Club. Then the next one is the members of Pekanbaru Toastmasters Club. We've got Toastmaster Dian, Toastmaster Alien, our Tom, Toastmaster Santa, and then Toastmaster Ika, Toastmaster Arif, and the other members. Okay, everyone, Pekanbaru Toastmasters is still one of the juvenile clubs in Division H. We do hope that we can learn from Vineka Online Toastmasters Club by having this joint meeting because we noticed that Vineka has diverse members from all over the world. So yeah, we can learn together here. So 
this evening we're going to rock we're going to learn to have fun we're going to learn together and i do hope that we gain something gain some knowledge and gain something from this meeting so by this i would like to call this meeting to order She frozen for everyone else. Is it she's still frozen for everybody too? Uh, yep. All right. Yeah. We're just gonna keep going then until she pops back in. Are you back, Pippet? You're muted, Pippet. Yes. Oh. All right. You're 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 frozen for about a good thirty seconds. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, before I said like, okay. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the meeting. And I would like to offer this meeting to our Tom, Toastmaster Ben, and Toastmaster Alin. All right, perfect. Great transition. Hi, I'm president of Benica Online Toastmasters Club, and I will be your co-Tom. Now, my other co-pilot is Toastmaster Alin. Say hello, Alin. Oh, hi. Hi, Ben. Nice to see you. And nice to see you, everyone. <laughs> Yeah. How many of you guys have ever been to a Toastmasters meeting when there's two Toms? Anybody? I haven't. Two. Anybody? Oh, Robin has. Robin's cool that way, though. But I felt it's a really cool way. We're going to do a joint meeting to have two different times to give two different perspectives and maybe have a little bit more fun. The theme of it, again, our pre the president of uh, Pick on Baru, if it already mentioned, is are you an ideal team player? Aileen, are you an ideal team player? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think so because, yeah, uh, you know, uh, in my school or in my college, like we 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 need to face uh, something or a task in a group discussion. So in order to get to achieve something great in our group task, we have to be a a great team player, you know. But yeah, what do you think? You know, like. Uh, when we want to be a great team player, uh, we should have some kind of qualities to be the great team player. So what do you think, Ben, about the qualities of a great team player? Fantastic question. One of the qualities that I have growing up, and I've been on teams all my life, from sports teams to work teams, and now even the Toastmasters teams, you got to have, you got to be able to compromise, the ability to compromise, because a lot of times you might have an idea and within a team, it might not be the best idea for the whole team. So you got to be able to have a compromise and work well and communicate really well together. And one of the things that we have for us is if you've never been to a Toastmasters meeting before, well, welcome, because this is a little bit different than typical ones. But how our meeting is run is that we have prepared speak a prepared speaking session with four speakers, two from each club, and then we have table topics. And then where table topics is where you as guests might get a chance to speak. And then our evaluation session. Right? That will be led by our general evaluator. Aileen, do you want to introduce our general evaluator to introduce the role players? Okay, I would like to do that because I'm so, I'm, so, I'm very excited because our GE right now is uh, unfortunately coming from the Pekanbaru Toastmaster. She's uh, she's one of my mentor in Pekanbaru Toastmaster, and I really adore her so much. So, yeah, without any further ado, please welcome our beautiful GE that is Toastmaster Tika. Hi, Toastmaster Tika. Nice to meet you. You look so gorgeous with that hijab. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Alin. You too. You look great yourself. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, welcome to all guests and uh, our fellow Toastmasters. So my name is Tika, and today I will serve as general evaluator. So the as a general evaluator, I'm responsible to give a general evaluation throughout the meeting since the big, from the beginning until the end of the session. And in tonight's meeting, I also have a very great uh, team. And I would like to call upon my first team. It's the timer, Postmaster Nina, to explain about her role. Hi, thank you, Toastmaster Ika. Hello, everyone. 
Nice to meet you all. My name is Nina and my role as a timer is to note any time used for prepared speech and also the um, the impromptu speech. And how do I do that? So I have the I have the background color. So when so for impromptu speech, when it's one minute, I'll put the green background. And when it's one to 30 minutes, I'll, I'll put the yellow. And if it's two minutes, and I'll put the red. So for impromptu speech, the time is between one to two, 30 minutes. And I will also report if the time used is qualified or not qualified. And for the prepared speech as well is the same, uh, depends on each speaker. And I think it's uh, for all speakers, it's around five to seven minutes. So when five minutes up, I'll put the green. And when it's six minutes, I'll put the yellow. And when it's seven minutes, I'll put the red. And when it's 7.30, I'll probably uh, text in a chat when I say red. And that's all for my timer duty today. And I'll give it back the control to G. Okay, thank you so much Toastmaster Nina for a very detailed explanation about our time. Now let's welcome to our next team. And that is our counter from Dinika uh, online. I would like to call Toastmaster Marendra Dika to explain about your role. Thank you, Chi. I think that each of you already see what I already shared to you, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So cool. we have here, as you can see, the counter Excel sheet which helping me so much in the notes whichever lexicals or non-lexical you have made during your speech i already write down some of the role takers for the two-day meetings from sani up to santa clara so i will add other names which are not yet there and i was counting since the beginning however apparently maybe i'm too happy to have a first Join meeting, so I just count the cover first using so, and then Nina twice using um, okay, but I forgot to mention the rest of the family. However, I will make a detail during the meetings, whichever you have made, I will explain later on at the end. And this is will be my reports to the GE by the time she will call me to give the reports regarding to these meetings. So everyone, just enjoy the meetings. Use your English as good as you can. However, never worry about make mistakes. This is the place you make mistakes. I just count it. Ladies and gentlemen, I give the corner back to the GE. Tika, Tika, time's yours. Okay. You, you are still mute, Tika. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Renra, for telling us about our uh, counter role. And it seems like I've become a queen of a counter for now, <laughs> but let's see later. Okay, so now let's welcome our next team. It's the Grammarian, Toastmaster Titin, to explain about your role and also our work of the day. Thank you, GE, Toastmaster Tika. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I'm serving as a grammarian today. And as a grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers listening carefully to the language usage. And I'll take note of outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. And as a grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. For today's meeting, the word of the day is alliance. Alliance is a noun. It means a union or association formed for mutual benefit, especially 
between countries or organizations. Example of the word alliance in a sentence, states seek to become stronger through alliance. Or the companies have formed an alliance to market the product. I will provide my report at the end of the meeting when called upon by the GE. Thank you and back to you, Toastmaster Tika. Thank you, Titin, Toastmaster, Toastmaster Titin, for telling us about your role of grammarian. And I would like to remind you again about our word of the day. It's alliance, alliance. Now, let's welcome to our next role. Uh, I would like to call upon Ballad Counter, Toastmaster Santa, to explain about your role. Thank you, Toastmaster Pika. Good evening, my fellow Toastmaster. My name is Santa. Today, I'm the Ballot Counter. As the Ballot Counter, it is my role to collect your vote for favorite speakers of each session tonight. And at the end of every session, you can submit your ballot by sending me your favorite speakers name through Zoom fully. I will collect the votes and give the final report of the favorite table topic speakers, prepare speech, and the evaluator at the end of the meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Toastmaster Santa, for explaining about your role. I would like to remind again for today's meeting, for today, tonight's meeting, especially for, for our guests, we have three favorite speakers, double topic speakers, prepared speakers, and also evaluators. Please, uh, please launch the volume for Santa so we can have our favorite speakers for tonight's meeting. And now uh, I would like to call upon our Zoom host. Oh, no, okay. I think that's all for now. And I would like to tell about our, um, there are other meeting rules also that is for evaluators. Table Topic Master, that is Toastmaster Robin, and Table Topic Evaluator, Toastmaster Lay. And that's all for now, and I will give the control back to our Toastmaster of the meeting, then, and also Alan. All right, thank you, Tika. All right, Alan, are you ready for four amazing speeches? Yeah. I'm so ready for uh, looking for our four great speakers, yeah, that are maybe already in Zoom with us right now, right? Yes, I am. can't wait. I'm looking at the different agendas and we have different pathways that are going to be presented. So we have a great opportunity to learn from different perspectives and I can't wait to see it. So our first speaker, let's get it right going, will be evaluated by Toastmaster Arif from Pekan Baru Toastmasters Club. You'll be evaluating Toastmaster Fifi. So Toastmaster Arif, do you want to introduce our first speaker? All right. Hello, fellow Toastmaster and guests. Hi, Toastmaster. So, um, for the first speaker is Toastmaster Fifi Amalia B from Bineka, Toast, Bineka Toastmaster Club. She will deliver her speech. Uh, she will deliver her project, uh, project level one, uh, level one, project two, writing a speech with purpose with the title, easy to express love with a speech length uh, five to seven minutes. So Toastmaster Fifi Amalia, be, Toastmaster Fifi Amalia Wati, sorry. Easy to express love. Easy to express love. Toastmaster Fifi Amalia Wati. It is easy to express love. And even more beautiful if you can feel it. That's the quote from me. So remember that. The question is, is there any specific ingredients or formula to express love? What do you think? 
if I recall the Kung Fu Panda movies, have you seen that movie? Please raise your hand if you have seen that. Wow, almost all of you, right, seen that movie? If you remember in its movie, this panda asked his father whether there is any special ingredients so that noodle soup becomes so famous in his hometown. And what is his father said to him? Can someone answer that? Is there any special ingredients or formula? Man, you want to help to answer? Is there any special ingredients or formula? Noodles. Yes, there is no, right? His father told this panda there is no specific ingredients similar in expressing love. It is easy. Today, I'm going to share you the simple and easy way how to express love. Now, can all of you here unmute yourself and follow what I'm going to say to you? Can everyone unmute yourself? And together, let's say love. 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 Congratulations. Now you are able to express love. Like I said, even it is more beautiful when you can feel it. My fellow Toastmaster and guests, yet there are some people who found it difficult in expressing the love. I give you one example. I have office men who love the other office men. So when this person came across the office, what did my friend do? She just looked the man like this. I asked her, why didn't you express your love since it is easy? What is her answer? See, nodding her head like this. As her teammate, I encourage her, well, if you don't expect it, he would not know, right? So you have to find a way. If you cannot express in verbal or in person, use or try the other way. Use nonverbal communication. One of the examples is using your body language. Do you know the Korean? How do they express their love? Using their hand, finger like this. Right? So it's one of the way to express love. It is easy, right? How about if you still cannot do it? Using the technology. We have so many online platforms right now. You can use or send a message through WhatsApp. Say, I love you and send to this person. That's easy, right? Or if you are afraid like my friend to be rejected, you can send my email. But remember, use your personal email, right? Not the office email, that's dangerous. My fellow Toastmasters and guests, Again, I want you to remember that it is easy to express love. Even more beautiful when you can feel it. After this meeting, I would like to recommend you find someone that you love and just say it, love. Or if you are still afraid, can use the other body language. For example, what does it mean if I show you? Rev Marendra, can you answer what does it mean if someone or your wife inform you like this? 
Wow, my energy. And then like this. I love it. So it's easy, right, to express love. Well. If you haven't done that, please do it after this meeting. Once again, remember my quote, it is easy to express love. And even more beautiful if you can feel it. Thank you. Back to Toastmaster of the meeting. Wow, amazing. Uh, how do you feel love, Aileen? Um, how do I feel love? Uh, maybe just like Toastmaster, uh, sorry, as Toastmaster Fifi said, maybe uh, uh, when do, how do I feel love is like mm, when I feel, you know, when someone tells me, uh, tells me he likes me or something like that. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, uh, random, but it kind of makes me being loved by person, you know. <laughs> how about you, Ben? When I get to bite into some tacos. That's how I get to feel love. Yeah. And food. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's kind of easy to express love. You can just say love to everyone. And that's, that is easy. You know, like you already express love, just like Toastmaster Fifi said. Yeah. All right. And I would love to hear the next speaker. Go ahead, uh -huh. Aileen. Okay. So we're going to the second speaker. Uh, yeah uh in a different pathway actually yeah in a different pathway that is dynamic leadership and the second speaker is coming from pekanbaru toastmaster yeah my dearest club yeah and uh she's going to be daily she's going to be evaluated by distinguished toastmaster pipit andriani and our second speaker is going to be toastmaster andini from pekanbaru toastmaster so yeah without any further ado maybe i'd like to call up on the Distinguished Toastmaster Pipit. Hello, Toastmaster, Distinguished Toastmaster Pipit. Are you there? Yes, I am here. Thank you so much for introducing me, Arim. Yeah. Thank and then you. continuing from what Alin said, Alin said, so Andini will deliver her level one project two uh, project speech from Dynamic Leadership Path. The title of the speech is Strong Exoskeleton. That's a big word. Strong exoskeleton. The purpose of the speech is for the members to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a divine purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topic. Please welcome Andini with strong exoskeleton. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, sorry, I got uh, pro uh, the pro uh, got problem on my laptop, so I use my uh, I think into my phone. So, uh, good evening, my fellow Toastmaster. Uh, my name is Andini. Uh, so, when you hear about exoskeleton, what comes in your mind? Or uh, can you name uh, the example uh, for of animal? Crabs. Crabs, yes, that's right. Anything else? Crabs, brother. Any yeah. insects? Yeah. Uh, if we look at uh, Wikipedia, exoskeleton, exoskeleton uh, that's our animal, who have uh, external skeleton uh, like snail, crabs, uh, and cockroach. So, so here I will discuss about the strongest uh, exoskeleton uh, in the world. Can you guess uh, what that animal? The my background is the clue. Cockroaches. Yes, but yes, that's right. Uh, so, uh, in this world, uh, uh, there are more fifteen thousand uh, cockroaches uh, in uh, in the world, but uh, ninety nine percent uh, play important to in our life, uh, like recycle organics or uh, material and decomposition. Um, so uh, the cockroach, eh, cockroach, it's a uh, very close into our life. For example, American and uh, Germanian cockroach, uh, it's very close in our life. 
So the cockroach is the adaptation, uh, an icon or epitome adaptation uh, from physical or chemical attack. And they are very agile and uh, the fastest animal uh, on, in the world. So the cockroach uh, uh, can be uh, the cockroach. Uh, it has a flat and flexible uh, body. He can fit uh, into the space uh, less than quarter of uh, its body. So it can uh, the cockroach also can be stepped on. Uh, it can resist uh, nine, 900 uh, bigger uh, than his body. So, uh, 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 yeah, uh, so the cockroach, uh, um, uh, the top uh, the toughness of uh, the cockroach it doesn't end uh, it can be it uh, anything uh, any variety of materials like organic materials uh, and then it can including hair paper uh, and that skin also uh, and then the cockroach also uh, can survive in a poor in poor uh, nutrient. So uh, uh, while the meanwhile the German cockroach uh, can also eat uh, their faces like uh, microbe uh, and then E. coli, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, or something else. Uh, and then it can survive without uh, water and uh, without uh, the food also. So we can also uh, survive without uh, uh, its head. Uh, so, and then uh, female cockroach uh, can reproduce um, asexual. Uh, so we can call it um so we can call it bachelor life maybe <laughs> um and then uh uh no, um and uh, for now uh researcher from russia has success uh breeding the animals in the mars planet uh can you guess the animal yet yeah. Absolutely, the cockroach. If if we look back into three million uh, years ago, uh, the cockroach is the best symbol, uh, the symbol of the best adaptation. How come uh, the majestic um, animals in that time, like dinosaurs? Uh, would be finished uh, at the time, but the cockroach uh, can be, uh, can survive until now, and then he can produce in other planets when the majestic uh, animal can survive until now. So we can learn uh, from the dirty uh, animals like cockroaches uh, to survive and to growing up, uh, and then to adaptation uh, there's uh, we don't need to be the most majestic uh, species but we need to survive um, uh, adaptation then uh, and being able to solve the problem i think uh, maybe we can learn uh, from the dirty animals uh, I think that's all about my speech today. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much, Toastmaster Andini. What a great speech about uh, about the cockroaches, you know, like the things that I'm really, really scared of in this life, you know. <laughs> How about you, Toastmaster Bendy? Scared of cockroaches or? 
Yeah. yeah I usually I usually have my wife uh, kill them for me. I don't, <laughs> I don't like them at all. And my wife, uh, she will typically come and grab them and play and then kind of throw them in my face. So, yeah. <laughs> but one thing is, is really good is taking something that we don't really like in general and learning about it to get some kind of appreciation for it. Even though uh, all I learned is how to, I have to kill it a little harder. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe uh, we we would like to go to the next speaker yet, yeah, Master Ben. Okay. So maybe it's your turn to introduce uh, the next speaker. Maybe Toastmaster Ben. Absolutely. Next speaker is also in a dynamic leadership pathway, and my old friend from Bali. Our evaluator, Dion. Hi, Dion. How are you doing? We miss you so much. Ah, I miss you too, Ben. <laughs> I'm she'll, be, she'll be evaluating my new friend all the way from Mauritius and our new one of Bali, uh, Benika's newest members, uh, Severine. So, uh, Dion, do you want to introduce our third speaker for us? All right, so good evening, everyone. My name is Dian. So today I will be a follow-up for Toastmaster Severin. So Toastmaster Severin is going to deliver her project level three from her pathway dynamic leadership. Uh, this is about paper for an interview. And the title is The Passionate Multitasker and her time is five to seven minutes. And the interviewing, the interviewer is our Toastmaster of the meeting, <laughs> Toastmaster Ben. And let's welcome our third speaker, Seven Sidhu, for the speech title, The Passionate Multitasker. All right. Welcome, Severine. Thank you for coming to interview us today. Can I ask you, what is your current role within our company? Good morning, Mr. Whitaker. So I am a teacher in this school for two and a half, since two and a half years. And when I entered the teaching profession, I already had a goal of becoming a head of department in the subject I teach. So that is why I am here today for the interview. Fantastic. First thing I would like to know is just tell me a little bit about your leadership skills. Why should we put you in this position being the head of the department? Thank you for the question. My leadership skills started right when I was at school, while I was taking different leadership roles in the student council and being a deputy head girl. Then it moved on during my university years. I was in an international organization called Isaac, where I took on different roles being project coordinators. Moving on, I moved to other position in journalism and in the hotel industry. I had a leadership position as an administrative assistant. Then I wanted to move to the teaching position. And I believe that as a teacher, I still, I'm, I am still being able to show my leadership skills in my classroom, because I think that I am in charge of 40 students. And I believe that if you do not have leadership skills, you cannot bring your students where you want to. That's fantastic. Based off of and being in I, show. Go ahead. Excuse me, I would like to add also that I am currently finishing my master's degree in educated, educational leadership. And I think that I have learned so much from what I have studied and also from what my colleagues have shared during the classes and the group discussions. I think it's very important to learn from other people. Um, but how, when you're in charge, how do you monitor the performance of the people you have to lead? So what ways do you monitor them and gauge their performance? To start with, I believe that we have to build rapport with people because it's not only about job and having your goals being met. We are working with people and that is a factor that should be considered first. So I believe for a team to be effective, to be successful, we have to build a rapport first. I studied about communication earlier, and I believe that there are many styles of communicators. And that is one of the 
how do I say, one of the um, tools that I will need to be able to build rapport, then to make the team one so that they or so that they see the goal that we are setting for the team. I, I would not like to, to work for a goal myself alone, but for the team to work towards the goal. Absolutely. I think uh, striving for individual goals and team goals are very important. And also, you, like you mentioned, building rapport is also very key because your team is going to be comprised of a lot of different personalities. How do you delegate responsibilities effectively? or efficiently? I like to make a plan. And then I like it to be very clear to everybody. Like if I had to do a plan for a specific goal, I would like it to be visible to all. I would have my task. I would like it to be visible to also of my team members. Because when you, when you share um, the task of everybody, you are transparent and it gives people trust and confidence in what you are doing. And it also increases the feeling that the leader is fair to everyone. And that also the leader is part 100% in the project. It is not just like managing and delegating work, but it will be really a teamwork. Absolutely, well said. Now, one thing about it is that when you mentioned earlier again about building rapport, being the boss is much different than being just one of the team players. You're not always going to make yeah. popular decisions. Not every, not everyone's going to like you at, at times. Yes. So how do you describe your leadership style and a two part question? And how do you motivate your team when they're not in a good, not in a good way? I think. I understand that. As a, as a leader, you are not always loved, you're not always accepted, your ideas are not always accepted. And I believe that at this point, I might consider to get the team focused towards the goal. We are not always aligned with what the leader says. We might not see the end of the road always, but I believe that our objective for all of us whether it, it doesn't depend on how much we love the leader or not, but our end goal is about the achievement of our students, the well-being of our students. I think I will then direct the focus to the students rather than what we are as a team or what of who I am as a leader. Absolutely. Again, you mentioned really well about the idea that you're not always going to make the most popular decisions. You have a employee on your team that really disagrees with you adamantly. How do you handle this disagreement in your way? Even if I believe I am a person who is ready to listen in most times, maybe then I would take more time with this person alone to understand why he or she disagrees completely. And maybe I could take time to reflect on my decisions and come back to this person. As I said earlier, I have learned that communication is key. And sometimes winning is not about winning our argument, our outcome, but winning for the team and for the future. I think this ah. is what I'm going to do. Excellent. And when you're communicating, are you more comfortable with verbal communication or written communication? Sorry, I didn't hear. Yeah. So when communicating with your team, are you more comfortable with verbal or written communication? Like talking, communicating, or if you're gonna write something? I think both, but in the professional area, I think I would favor written communication because by writing, I will take more time to reflect on what I want to convey as a message. And also I believe we are accountable for everything that we do. So I believe this is written communication is what I will use most in my team for the future. Excellent. And last question, who was your favorite leader growing up or even now and why? My favorite leader. I have no names in mind, but I, I was always influenced, I can say, by ambitious persons because they have a drive that makes me feel energetic 
that also drives me to push when there are difficult times and that makes me believe that I can do something. So there's no popular people, but I am just influenced and motivated by ambitious people because I am also an ambitious person. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sabrine, for the interview. Great job. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Back to you, Tom. Wow. What a great interview moment, right? <laughs> It was like, uh, kind, uh, you know, like, oh, whenever it comes to a uh, word of interview, uh, I it it kind of make me scared because you know, like maybe the interviewer is a bit, um, you know, like scared, like you know, like um, a bit, you know, strike person or something like that. But great job, uh, uh, Ben, like you, uh, you are the multitasker, Tom. Like, uh, you're such a great job for doing as an interviewer. And Thank also you. the Toastmaster Severin, also the person who got interviewed. Like, you are so fluently, you know. Thank you so much. And by the way, uh, Severin did not know any of these questions. I told her I was going to be, actually, I asked her, do you want me to be easy or do you want me to be hard? And she says, be hard. I'm like, I was going to be hard anyway. So she had no choice. But again, it was, it was pretty great. Great yeah. job under pressure. So fluently. All right. Our yeah. last speaker, you want to introduce our last speaker, Ailey? Oh yeah, this is going to be our last speaker for this prepared speech session. Uh, that is uh, Toastmaster Alfin. He's he's coming from Pekanbaru Toastmaster, and he's going to delivering his speech. And she's he's going to be evaluated by distinguished Toastmaster Natali Cahyadi. Okay, so maybe Toastmaster Natali uh, has been here with us right now. Hi, Toastmaster Natali. It's time. Hello, Toastmaster Ali. Nice to see you. Nice to see you all. So it's my pleasure to evaluate Toastmaster Alfin from Bekanbaru Toastmasters Club. He's going to deliver a project, level one, project two, uh, write a speech with a purpose. The purpose of this project is to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topics. The time is five to seven minutes. And when I read the title of the speech, I was reminded of the holiday and the, the aftermath of the holiday because his speech title is cholesterol. You see people cholesterol. So with five to seven minutes, please welcome Toastmaster Alfin Sulmaita with his speech title, Cholesterol. Okay, thank you uh, for the introduction. So good evening, my fellow Toastmasters and guests. So it is actually my second speech in Toastmasters. Uh, my pathway is uh, presentation mastery. So I'll be using a slide to present uh, what I want to tell you about. Okay. Is anyone can see the picture? Yes, already. Okay, so uh, is anyone want to tell me what do you think when you see, when you see this picture? Anyone? Yummy. See? Yummy. 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 So, yes. Okay, see. maybe uh, you can uh, maybe uh, tasty <laughs> or uh, anyone knows uh, what what is the name of the dish? Kikil maybe? Kikil, yeah. Kikil. Yeah. Yep. Uh, kikil or gulai tunjang. So uh, maybe uh, what is in your mind is uh, maybe uh, uh, greasy food, uh, fatty food, uh, high in cholesterol, or anything else. So the dish itself is called uh, gulai tunjang or kikil. It, it is made by uh, using kikil or tunjang. I don't know what, what is uh, the word in English. Uh, that is cooked in such an overcooked uh, coconut milk. Uh, in Pekanbaru, my place, uh, there are lots of uh, Padang restaurant, maybe exceeding the Padang itself. Yeah. Hello? No, now we can see, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Bentar ya. So, uh, uh, sometimes people tell me, uh, don't eat this, don't eat that, uh, cholesterol this, cholesterol that. Uh, so, what comes in my mind, is that really true? Uh, is uh, cholesterol that bad for us or do we really need cholesterol? So we come to the, uh, the first point. What is the cholesterol itself? So this is what cholesterol is. So cholesterol itself is maybe a hexagon of a carbon chain something. No, the cholesterol is lipid, uh, one, one type of lipid that is only produced by animals. So uh, those animals like chicken, cows, uh, fish, and even us. So uh, because we can uh, tell that uh, we are also animals. So what uh, comes to our mind, what is the difference between cholesterol and fat? Cholesterol itself is a uh, lipid that needs to be processed before uh, using, but uh, fat is lipid that can be used uh, in, in, in instant. Like we burn uh, fat to produce energy. So how is it processed in our body? Fat or carbs or anything that we eat will be absorbed in our intestine. And, uh, and then it will be processed in our liver. It seems complicated, but it's, it's not really complicated, actually. Let's erase something, uh, all those things that we don't need. This. So the glucose and, uh, and lipid. Uh, we all know that even if we not eat any lipid, we can be fat. Why? Because even sugar, rice, or anything that is not fatty food can become cholesterol in the end by uh, throughout uh, some kind of uh, uh, biochemical reaction. And uh, lipid uh, and lipid absorb in uh, to our uh, bloodstreams and and then process in our liver. Uh, with all the cholesterol that is made uh, also by uh, from glucose. All those cholesterol that is processed, uh, processed by the liver will be, uh, will be processed into lipoprotein. What is lipoprotein? Lipoprotein itself is a protein that has a capacity to bind lipid. So uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh, you ever heard that doctor said uh, HDL is a good cholesterol, LDL is a bad cholesterol. So actually, uh, we do need both of the cholesterol. It's uh, HDL and LDL. So LDL in this session, uh, VLDL needs to be. Uh, it is need, it, it, it is needed to transport the fat that accumulates in, in our liver. So the first one of our cholesterol function is to produce energy. By using lipase enzyme, uh, the cholesterol uh, becomes fatty acid, that, fatty acid that, that can be burned into energy. After that, it becomes IDL or intermediate, uh, intermediate density lipoprotein. It then process uh, in the liver and becomes LDL. Now, L LDL, uh, like the doctor said, is a bad uh, is a bad cholesterol is uh, is not really that bad, as long as uh, we have it in uh, right amount. So the LDL will transport all those uh, cholesterol to be processed in our tissues, and then uh, what is the function of LDL if the L, uh, HDL if the LDL is uh, so good to us? So HDL uh, that means high density lipoprotein that means the cell uh, has a lot of lipoprotein. So it has a, a big capacity to bind the lipid. So SDL function is to bind all the excess cholesterol uh, that we have in our bloodstream. So what is happening in our tissues? What is good about cholesterol? So our, our cell membrane use cholesterol to make its membrane. So the, our cell can keep its consistency. And also uh, cholesterol in our other tissues like 
testicle uh, use cholesterol to make testosterone uh, and ovary uh, use cholesterol to make uh, female hormone like estradiol and progesterone and uh, use in uh, cortex adrenal to make uh, corticosteroid hormone. It also uh, used uh, in our skin to make vitamin D and also obviously uh, in our uh, to produce our bile acid to digest lipid. So what is bad about cholesterol? Uh, like I said, uh, if we have uh, way too much amount of LDL in our body, it will increase our uh, in our uh, LDL. LDL will bring and and pile up all the fat in our uh, in our blood, uh, in our bloodstream, especially in our blood in our uh, blood vessels. The fat will clog the our 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 uh, bl uh, uh, blood vessels, and so, and it can be rup uh, ruptured uh, to to block uh, the smaller blood vessels. Like if it happens in our heart. It will become a heart attack if we if it if it's blocking the our eyes. It uh, will uh, makes us blind. This is the raptor. Uh, this is the the raptor atherosclerosis. So, uh, what do we have to do about about this? So, it is simply just to decrease LDL and increase HDL by. Uh, eating a uh, healthy diet uh, for the heart, exercise, healthy weighting, uh, quiet smoking, and medication if needed. So in conclusion, uh, is cholesterol good for us? Uh, in right amount, yes. Do we need cholesterol? Yes. What should we do about this together to make alliance uh, to live healthy together? Uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wow, thank you so much, Swasher Alvin. It's such a great and while well, such an informative and also educative speech, yeah, about uh, the, the good things or bad things about the cholesterol, right, Swasher Ben? Yeah, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> yeah, because there's a, there was a peak of kikil, yeah, such a, you know, like, uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, Lebaran's vibe, yeah, where lots of fatty foods around us, such as, um, you know, rendang, uh, lontong, and many other things like that. But yeah, unfortunately, uh, we didn't get a chance to taste kikil, yeah, uh, my favorites too, because yeah, my mother didn't cook for that. But I, my, my favorite food is actually rendang. How about you, Ben? Uh, is there fatty food you like? Maybe I love rendang as well, and I'm actually I can make really good rendang as well. Okay. So, uh, cholesterol is good, but yes, <laughs> healthy diets. Now, yeah. let's go to our timers report real quick. Can we get a quick timers report, Toastmaster Nina? Hi, yes, Ben. So, for timers report. We have the M Toastmaster VV five minutes and fifty six seconds. Toastmaster Andini six minutes and forty eight seconds. Toastmaster Severin seven minutes and thirty one seconds. And Toastmaster Alvin nine minutes and thirty three seconds. So only Toastmaster VV and Toastmaster Andini are qualified. Seven minutes and 31 seconds? Yes. <laughs> Pretty tight timing. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. P. Or this is already, you know, I I put like it's the okay. time. Yeah. It's, it it's okay. I'm just giving you a hard time. 31. You, you are the timer. It's all good. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. It's almost, all right. It's almost qualified. But yeah. All right. No but worries. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna make qualified. But yeah, it's seven minutes and thirty-one. So I think Toastmaster VV and Toastmaster Andini are eligible to be qualified. All right. Thank you so much, Nina. Appreciate it. Now, before we move on to our next section, 
What do we have next, Aileen? Okay, so before we are going to the next session, yeah, the most awaited session, uh, but uh, maybe uh, let we let us have some group picture, I think, right? Ben? Yes, turn on your camera. Guys, please make some posts. Make some great posts. Okay. Maybe well, Talitha, Dejan, Amelia, Pedriani, uh, Clara. Has a great smile for this meeting. Severine, where are you? Let's go. Severine, where are you? Yeah, I'll take photos uh, for now. So just normal pose. One, two, three. Okay. Should be two pages, right? Is it two pages? There's 28 of us. Unless you have the. Yeah. Update. Okay. okay. We have two pages. Yeah, I'll take photo of the next page too. One, two, three. Okay. Is there any other post that we'd like to try? Okay, maybe what some other think? post. Uh, free post. Maybe. Just... <laughs> free post. Talitha, Santa Clara, come on, turn on your cameras. Okay. One, two, three. Second page. One, two, three. Got gotcha. you. Everyone did it. How much? Uh, Toastmaster VP. All right. All right. Okay, maybe. Uh, maybe uh, Ben, would you like to introduce the next most awaited session? I I think that everyone is, uh, you know, kind of not patient for facing this awaited session. You know. I think everyone is on their the edge of their seat, waiting to get a chance to speak uh -huh. with our table topic master of the evening. Where's he at? Where did he turn? Where, where is he at? Master. Robin, there he is. Robin. Robin Chen. Wow. Hi, Toastmaster Robin. Nice to see Hello. you. Hello. Nice to see you too. All right. Um, I'm just going to start or you're going to introduce me first. Robin Chan is a Toastmaster, Table Topic Master of the evening. He's all the way from Mauritius. He loves it when people introduce him. And, and you know, prop him up and hype him up a little bit. He's a great speaker, wears great hats, has a fantastic smile, right? Knows 17 languages, give or take a couple. You know, just the overall great guy. Let's all give it up for our to table topic master of the evening, or for him, the afternoon, Robin Chan. Let's go, yeah, Robin. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for such great introduction. All right. Okay. So now we have table topics. So for the benefits of a guest, what is table topics session all about? Well, it's a chance for you to speak on your feet, a chance for you to be able to just have an impromptu speech. So it's a training, but at the same time, it's also a challenge. So Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to please let me know if you're interested to speak in the table topic segment, type your name below in the chat, or I will just pick up your name randomly. All right. Okay. So who wants to go first? Because I do not know some people here. Sorry. Let's see. Arif would like to go first. All Thanks. right. Okay, here's my question to you. Can you can you guys uh, Zoom Master? Can you pin him up? Okay, so my first question is before before I ask you this question, I want to ask you: Are you in a relationship right now, oh, yeah. or no? You're in a relationship. Okay, so here's my question to you: How to be a good team player? for your partner how to be a good team player for your partner toastmaster arif over to you how to be a good team player for my partner this is a very hard question because i don't have any experience about that but 
if it's fit in uh, fit in uh, other other kind of relationship i think uh, to be a good player is to support in anything that team needs such as if the team needs money i need to support the money if team needs uh, like uh, how to say that mental support then i give the mental support su such as uh, 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 i don't know how to say that but uh, but oh my god <laughs> oh god you have a, such a difficult question <laughs> All right. So, okay. I think that's all. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I want to have more some more tips, but thank you very much for sharing today. All right. So next up, we have who can we have next? Let's have Amelia Dewi. Are you on? Yes. To pick on the challenge. Okay. Okay. So here's here is your question. Are you ready? Yes. Ready. Here's your question. What are the virtues of a high performance team? What are the virtues of a high performance team? Over to you. Uh, sorry, so you say what are the virtues of high performance teams, right? Yeah. Well, uh, for me, High performance teams means that everyone on the teams are supporting each other. So, and back upping each other. So when one person have a problem and cannot do the responsibility, the other team could back up and support them. However, it's not always mean that you can always have any problem have problem and neglecting your responsibility even though you have the supporter but you need to have on mind that i have to support my team i think that is for me for high performance for high performance team needs to have supportive personality and supportive characteristic. For example, in Pinecato's Master Club, I believe that if someone cannot attend, other people in the club will back up each other, right? Okay, so for me, maybe. <laughs> All right, man, very, very honest answer. Or if not in our team, maybe from other clubs, all right? Okay, I think for me, the virtue is having a supportive uh, personality. Thank you, back to Robin. Thank you very much. Let's give her a round of applause. Supportive uh, team player. That's indeed a very good virtue that everybody ought to have because we can help each other up by being supportive in a team. And I hope that Toastmaster Emilia can be supportive on the next time when we have Binica meeting to take off some roles as well. Some, some of our members, like what Ben say, maybe. But I believe that you will come to help us up and be supportive. Okay, awesome. Next up, let's have... A person here I have, who do I have on my list? Uh, you know, there's, I think, to, I think today is Christmas. One person I can see that is Noel, the other one is Santa. So I think it's Christmas today. So let's call up our guest here, Noel. Noel? Oh, yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. So let's have a question for you a very simple one very simple one are you ready yes you want a simple one or you want a difficult one simple one <laughs> of course simple one okay awesome so here's your question how do you build trust in a team how do you build trust in a team 
Over to you. Okay. How I build a trust in a team. Okay, let me start. Trust meaning that uh, people believe us and we have to give them the evidence or proof that we can able to do something for him or for her. So if I have a team, if I have a person and they have to trust to me, I have to evidence or prove them that what I say, it have to be done. So this is the first thing. So from the attitude, from the character that I have, this is a trust for them. When I do the wrong thing, I have to have the behind reason of that. I have to give them the reason why I do that. This is for them or this is for me. So that so that's they will still trust for me. Trust is meaningful because in a team we have to have the alliance for each other. We do not trust our team will break for others. So trust is meaningful and how to keep trust in our team is we have to prove with our team. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that, Noel. And I believe that, you know, by showing a trust, you can really build up relationships. And thank you for sharing that today. And next up, let's have Toastmaster Herman. Hey, hello. Long time no see. You're on mute right now. Yes. Okay. Robin. Okay. Yes. Would you like to have a question right now? Yes. Okay. So here's your question. You know, in before I share this question, we in today's today's theme is are you an ideal team player? You know, team player is not necessary to be in an organization, but it can also be in a relationship, in your community, anywhere. So here's your question today. How do you manage differences with your partner? How would you manage differences with your partner? Over to you. As a person who likes to, to join with the many activities and like activities, uh, Kenji, Kenji running and and also, and some of others activities. Usually every day I do I do uh, exercise with mingle with many people. Always meet at some time I meet a different uh, perspective, different opinion, but. I can let let my my friend or my team to do to do his his way what what he likes to do and I never I really appreciate he or or she to do uh, his uh, his idea her idea and and I never I never doubt that my my team will will do with their own usually if if he or she get the difficulties so we we are we are going to make a discussion usually small discussion after after the activities like uh, we we get drink uh, in the coffee shop and we talk about the problem and then from from that a moment so uh, we so we, we will have the idea how to solve our own problem. Okay, back to our TTM. Robin Chan. Thank you very much. And yes, is to talk about it. And you know, when you bring someone for coffee, definitely you can resolve the, the problem, but you have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, of course. But you know, okay. Medan is cheap, you know, coffee. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Maybe, maybe your wife needs expensive coffee. Then you will resolve every problem. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing your your journey, your experience with us today. And now let's have the next person. Who do I have on the list? Here is let's have Janet from Swepa. Are you here? Janet. Calling once, calling twice, calling thrice. Okay, so let's have Toastmaster Apri. Apri, are you here? Yes, he's here. Okay. Let's have a question for you, Toastmaster Apri. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Ready? Yep. Here's your question. How would you describe a bad team player? How would you describe a bad team player? Over to you. Okay, thank you for the topic. How I can describe about how bad is my team player is? I think it's about communication, right? If we fail communicate about something, it really make me feel really anxious because, especially in Toastmaster, we have an exco, right? We have a lot of things going on, especially if we lead to be a team. Communication is really really crucial. And I remember when I worked at my company before, there are a lot of teams that I need to 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 what was called it is I need to manage. And and if we don't have a, a clear communication, the project eventually eventually will will, will fail. And it's make me uh, a bad as a project manager. And as a project manager, it's really hard to manage my team. And because sometimes people just don't want to talk about their problem in the project. So it's make me really, really a hard time to be a project manager. I think to be a, become a, a great project manager, uh, communication, clear communication is really important because if we fail to communicate the, the little thing, eventually in the project we are holding together will be eventually will break down and 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 will fail and so i think this communication is really important and we don't want to avoid it and most people try to avoid the communication because is it makes them comfortable and however in, in the in the end of the day communication is as one of uh, the foundation if you want to try to make a better and great team player I think start all for me back to the topic master. Awesome. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Apri. Indeed, communication is very important when you want to address some issues, especially when you want to address to someone who doesn't perform well in your team. So indeed, that it's good to communicate so that we can resolve any issue. Thank you very much. And next up, I can see a request here. Uh, someone who wants to do it is Toastmaster Tika. Yes. Yes. Okay. Am I G. Yes, you are audible. Okay. Here's your question. Are you ready? Ready yep. or not? Ready or not. Okay. You are about to enter into a team. You have to pitch yourself and convince them you bring contribution to your team. So how are you going to do that? You are about to enter into a team. You have to pitch yourself to, and convince them that you bring contribution to the team. So how would you do that? And your time starts now. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. My name is Tika. If you ask me how to convince someone, 
actually this is the least thing that I could do before I joined Toastmasters. I'm, I, I used to be a very pers a person who cannot communicate well and I would have a trembled hands, but let me try. It reminds me back when I was about to promote myself to become a vice president of education. I know, right? I'm not feeling that I'm good enough, but I'm trying my best. So here I am in the stage. Hello, Toastmasters, fellow leaders and upcoming great communicators. I will become a great vice president of education. Why? I always think that education is a very important thing in life, but people think that being able to speak English is hard, especially when you never learned English when you were a child. But here, as a vice president of education, I will ensure that you will no longer feel that way because in Toastmaster, we don't learn, we don't learn to be perfect but we learn to make mistakes. So we can, we can learn from our mistakes and support each other and become a better speaker. In Toastmasters, there's no better speaker, but in Toastmasters, there will be lots of supporting speakers and supporting environment. And it is a really great alliance to actually grow yourself. So come here in Toastmaster. Back to you, our TTM. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Tika. And have you been convinced by her to, for her to join this team right now? So I would like to ask all of you. So if you're convinced, please give a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, yes. Awesome. Okay, now we have, let's have one more question. So who do I have on the list? Is Talita here? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Awesome, Surprise, I can see. Surprise, uh, the name is Talita, but it will... Uh, is uh, the man who have a self. <laughs> so, so your name is not Talita? Yeah, I use my, uh, my uh, access because my laptop, my home laptop is... Uh, okay, so what's, what's your name? Uh, my name is Giu. Sorry? Giu, G-E-O. G-E-O? Yes. Giu. Yep. Oh. Okay, Gio. All right, so here's a question for you. If you are assigned a role that you are not, that it's not your preference of your strength, how would you respond? If you're assigned to a role that is not to your preference of your strength, how would you respond? Well, it's uh, hard, uh, sorry, uh, is uh, if I sign something that there is not the strong, strong as me, that's you mean? Sorry, you, you uh, want me to repeat the question for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you assign a role that is not your preference in terms of your strength, mm -hmm. how would you respond? Oh, like you're, you're in a team, you're assigning a team and a role for you is not your strength. Mm. So how would you respond? Okay, uh, firstly, I, I will uh, uh, ask the, the team that uh, the role, this role is not, not, my, not my strongest, uh, uh, strongest role. So, uh, but 
I think uh, as a team, I have to uh, perform the, the best of me, even this is not the this is not I mean, strongest strongest thing or strongest uh, education for me. But uh, yeah, uh, I have to uh, learn uh, about the the thing or uh, the, uh, I believe uh, as an, a human there is uh, nothing uh, nothing is nothing is impossible so as uh, as long as you want to uh, as long as you want to learn and you you want to learn uh, sorry, as long as you want to learn and you want to uh, try to hard but uh, it can be uh, good uh, it can be success in the future uh, that is this is for for, for me and back to our uh, Thank you very much for sharing your experience with us today. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay, I, I believe that what, what I learned from you is to have the ability to learn because when we can't perform at when it's not our strength, but yet we can still learn to be able to perform so that we can have a good collaboration with our team. So thank you very much for sharing. And that's all for my role as Table Topic Master today. So thank you very much for having me and back to the two Toms of today. Over to you. Oh, wow. That was a great session. And uh, thank you so much for Toastmaster Robin who has Lead, let our our most awaited session that is table topic master. Okay, so I think I can't see Ben. Hello, right here. Oh right yeah. Here. Okay, I think the the Zoom has uh yeah I haven't uh spot like you but yeah there you are. Okay, so uh what do you think Ben? How was the uh, table topic master for this meeting? Oh look at Robin, he's just so handsome. Comes up with great questions. So thought provoking and a lot of great answers. And did yeah. I mention that Robin's single and lives on a tropical island off the coast of Africa and Mauritius? Yeah, yeah, and, and then it was uh, very nice too for you know listening to um, lots of different perspectives, right? From about the uh, how about how to be the great team player, and uh, you know like from lots of great speakers, right? You know like and most of them were a guest, yeah, were a guest, not uh not just a member of Toastmaster, but there were uh, a guest, yeah. So yeah, and they did a great job too. So yeah, I you know hopefully after this, yeah they're going to be uh, officially member of Toastmaster, right? Absolutely. And yeah. speaking of great team player, let's go back to our great timer, Nina. Timer, Toastmaster Nina, time is yours. Yes, thank you. So for timer's report for all prepared, eh, no, all table topic speakers are qualified. Easy. Thank you very much. You can vote for all of them. Wow. Yeah, yes. before they did a great job and yeah, going to be the great speakers for Toastmasters in the future. All right. So now we're at the evaluation session. So let's go right into it and introduce our wonderful general evaluator for the evening, Toastmaster Tika. Hello, thank you so much, our lovely Tom, Ben and Aline, beautiful and adorable Aline. So now we come to our last but not least session, that is the evaluation session where we can learn from our mistake and become a better communicator. So now, uh, before I continue, I, I would like to ask one question, please. Is the voting started? Has the voting started already or not? After the evaluation, uh, we'll submit. The oh, process. it will be after the evaluation. Okay, then. Okay, so now we will uh, have four evaluators for each speaker and also the evaluation session for table topic session. So please bear yourself on your seat. We will come to our 
most awaited session, especially for me also. And But first of all, let's go to our first evaluator. Let me check. The first evaluator will be um, Toastmaster. I'm sorry, wait a minute. Toastmaster Arif. So Toastmaster Arif will evaluate the first speaker who talks about the importance of expressing love. That is Toastmaster Vivi. For Toastmaster Arif, the time is yours. Well, thank you so much, Toastmaster Tika. Well done, well done, Toastmaster Vivi. You've delivered such a wonderful speech. I believe this is not your first time delivering speech because, because you've did a great job in delivering speech. Your, you use uh, your tone, you use your uh, speed and volume in a perfectly perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Arifan Ugraha but you can call me sweetheart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, easy to express love. From the title itself, it is really engaging. But what most surprising me is uh, from the beginning till the end of the speech, Toastmaster Fifi, uh, already engage with the audience by first you deliver speech by standing in a standing position that's what the champions did they deliver speech in a standing position and second they they have a conversation with the audience you you ask the audience with uh, with a with a question and the audience answer the question and that's uh, create a good uh, good communication between the speaker and the audience, and it's really really really, really good. And I I believe I don't have much to be delivered to you as a note, but uh, this is the little thing that I I prepared uh, as the evaluation for your speech. Uh, as we know that a perfect or a good speech contains with three things. There are opening, body, and conclusion. And my suggestion is for your opening, uh, I would suggest you may use some kind like uh, a, a more engaging things like, uh, like how to say that? Uh, like uh, apa ya dalam bahasa Inggris? A, 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 some kind like uh, uh, engaging question or 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 poetry or pantun. I think that we that will attach more our attention to the speaker. And the second is body. The 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 speech body should be. Uh, related with the audience. For example, if the, if the audience are, it's the person of the audience are young person, you may use the, the body of your speech uh, content with, with a young thing, like, you know, not talking about old thing, but talking about the newest thing because the audience are young. And the third is conclusion. You gotta, be, you gotta conclude the speech with the, also like like the opening, with the with the with the interesting things, I don't know you 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 can, uh, but I mean what I mean is uh, not just the content of the conclusion, but also how you deliver the conclusion. Remember how you deliver your message is more important than the message itself. And let me close this evaluation by a uh, short of poem or in Melayu we call it pantun. Jalan-jalan uh, ke pasar bawah. Jangan lupa membeli patin. Cakep. Kalau saya ada salah, mohon maaf lahir dan batin. Thank you. Back to GE.
All right, thank you, Toastmaster Arif, for a detailed explanation uh, for our first speaker. I'm sorry, I was distracted a moment. Okay, now let's go to our second evaluator that uh, that is distinguished Toastmaster Pipit. Uh, she will evaluate our second speaker, Toastmaster Andini, who talks about the strong exoskeleton cockroaches. <laughs> okay, now let's welcome our uh, evaluator, distinguished Toastmaster Pipit. Can I have the timer neutralize the background? The red in my view. Um, timer. Timer, please reset your time signal, please. Thank you. Yes, I haven't saw it. I don't want it to be there. <laughs> Oops, sorry. No yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, who would have thought there's so much we can admire from cockroaches? Now, I'm sure after listening to Andini's speech today, we will not look at cockroaches the same way again, right? At least for me. There are so many things that I like from Andini's speech. The first one is, it's very interesting. The information she delivered was very interesting. And judging from the responses from the audience, I'm sure that none of them have heard this information before. I saw the comment section, it was flooded with comments, wow, like this like that. And then also their facial expressions, yeah. So novelty is really important in our speech. That's why I commend you on this. I know a lot of people who have a lot of really good delivery skill in their speech, but their content is nothing new for us, right? So it's for me, it's more important to have interesting content than interesting delivery but nothing new in it so congratulations on this point second i like that you tried to be philosophical in your speech so it was not just information after information after information or fact after fact after fact but actually in the end you try to package that into a certain philosophical standpoint for example how uh, something that we consider dirty or something that we consider ugly can actually be very strong and also beautiful even have a lot of positive values. But I put, if I could give you more suggestions about this, I would like you to repackage the way you say it so it will be easier to remember. For example, you can connect it to the fact that, you know, the easier uh, proverb is usually don't judge the book by the cover, for example, right? That's exactly where I got from your cockroach story. Or don't judge the book by the exoskeleton or something in this case. Okay, so I think that one will be, um, you know, uh, enhance your philosophical point here. Yeah. Now, we have covered how interesting your speech was, but I think your interesting content deserves interesting delivery skill as well. So it will be balanced. Yeah. The first thing that I noticed was the opening. The first word that came out of you was, uh, you can look at the recording later. It was the first thing that came out. And I know that it's hard to avoid ah sound in our speech. I actually probably have said it several times, but at least for the opening, try to make a conscious effort to avoid it. So you have to prepare a strong opening, right? To avoid ah sound like this, this is the beginning. Next one is I noticed you also missed the opportunities to do body language and also involve the audience. In body language, there are so many things you could have done. For example, cockroaches can fit into small spaces, something like that. So if you chase them, they can just say, bye, catch me next time or something like that. Right? So I think that would be more interesting the way you say it. And also, when it comes to big words such as subtle cocus bacillus or something, try to invite your audience to say it with you because, you know, it's like a very challenging word and this is an opportunity to involve them in your speech. So I'm almost over time. So I hope with this, uh, you will be better. Thank you. All right, thank you. Distinguished Toastmaster Pipit for the evaluation sessions. Now let's wake up 
Now, let's welcome our third evaluator, that is Toastmaster Diane, who will evaluate Toastmaster Severin for her project. Let's welcome Toastmaster Diane. The time. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Thank you. A good education can change anyone, but a good leader can change everything. And this is the thing that I see and when I heard the interview speech session from Toastmaster Severin Sido. I like the way how you started the interview by introducing yourself. It was very simple, direct, and concise. I can sense someone who has high confidence and faith to herself. And I like the way how you maintain professionalism during the interview by wearing professional attires. Appearance is not everything, but during interview and in professional lives, when we don't know someone, the first thing that we see from them is appearance, like how well they dress and how tidy they are. Still in, in, in professional lives, first impression is very important. And third thing is like, I like the way how you structure and describe your backgrounds by giving the example. You had an experience as a project manager, then you have an experience also in tourism and hotel industry. You had an experience as admin assistant, then move as a teacher. This is very good answer because people will get to know you well and in interviewer, uh, eyes, they will consider your diverse background, why you can able to manage their students. And number four is, I like your focal variety. It was clear, easy to understand, and I like the way how you emphasize every answer, all the answer. Number five, I like the way how you handle yourselves when you face difficult question. For the example, being a leader is not always accepted, but you have to be focused with the purpose of the teams. And this is very good because if, if I'm interviewer, I will look someone who likes challenge and not people pleaser. People pleaser. And because every people, this is the thing, this is one of best criteria that all leader needs, especially when they live a big and working uh, with a lot of diverse and in diverse uh, community. I like the way how you handle yourself during the interview, and I can feel sense someone who has a strong self-control. And I have two suggestions for you, uh, Severin. First is your eye contact. Try to bring more vibes and more life during the interview. When you are relaxed, the interviewer also relax. I know during the interview, there will be like high tension, like right, within both party, but when one of them able to create like humors, so it give better, it will give uh, more ASA during the interview. And the second thing is like give one example when you manage the team and how was uh, and how was the result and how was uh, it was how it was affect your teams. And overall, I really like your speech. It was such a great interview speech. Interview speech. We can learn a lot. We can learn a lot from you. And I really like how you post yourself and describe yourself by like, I'm ambitious a people. And I believe you'll be a great team, a uh, great leader in your team and inspiring teacher. Congratulations to completed your project level three from dynamic leadership and looking forward for the upcoming speech. Over to you, General Evaluator. <coughs> Thank you, Toastmaster Dian, for the evaluation session. So now let's welcome our board evaluator, that is distinguished Toastmaster Natalie. I'm actually a big fan of you. <laughs> All right, the so distinguished Toastmaster Natalie, who will evaluate our fourth speaker, Toastmaster Alvin, about cholesterol. So for this thing is Toastmaster Natalie, the time is yours. Cholesterol is like two sides of the coin. 
there is a good side and there is a bad side. Toastmaster Alvin, thank you so much for sharing such an informative speech to all of us. In this speech, you have fulfilled your project objective, which is to develop and deliver a speech with a purpose. Now, not only you have informa informative purpose check, there are also two more things that makes me uh, pay attention to your speech. The first one is you make a smart choice of a topic. Your choice of topic was relevant, timely, and also interesting. When the topic is relatable to all of us, immediately from the get-go, we pay more attention because it, we know we're gonna get something out of it. So I think it was a smart choice. The second thing is the use of slides. Human is a visual creature. And when you add visual on top of your verbal explanation, then the rate of us as your audience processing the information will be doubled. So I commend you for the smart use of the visual slides. Now, to help you to improve your HDL and to lower your LDL, here is my two recommendations and both related with the structure. Number one, what's in it for the audience? This is a very crucial point that you need to put on your mind whenever you write a speech. What's in it for the audience means that whenever you write a speech, make sure you have a clear specific purpose on your mind. Try to summarize the idea of your speech in one sentence. For example, maybe for your speech, the specific purpose can be to understand the impact of cholesterol for our health or something else that you want the speech to develop to. The point is when you have a specific purpose on your mind, that will be the backbone of your speech where you can use it as the opening and as the closing. For example, at the closing, you can reaffirm the, uh, the message or the purpose again. So this is why cholesterol is not only good, but also has a bad impact and we need to do it with discretion. The second thing that I could suggest to you is to apply the rule of three in the body. I noticed that you were over time and the message was not so clear. And I believe you can make the message clearer by trimming the content of your speech into three main points. For example, you, you were talking about what is cholesterol, how it is processed, the use of cholesterol, bad impact, and ways to reduce. There are five points. Try to condense it into three points, and then you will have enough time to allocate balanced explanation for each point that directly connected to your main purpose. Overall, this is an informative speech. I commend you on beginning your uh, Toastmasters project. Two things I love, the topic and the slides, two things that can be improved, what's in it for us, and also the rule of three in the body. And Toastmaster Alfin, keep learning, keep improving, and become HDL. High Develop Learner. Back to you. Yay, thank you, to distinguished Toastmaster Natalie, for actually uh, the end for speech evaluator. Now uh, we will come to our last but not least evaluation, evaluation session. That is Toastmaster Lai, who will evaluate the table topic session. So for Toastmaster Lai, okay, the time is yours. Uh, before I start, uh, Zoom Master, please don't spotlight the timer. Yeah? Please don't spotlight the timer. I will start with our table topic, Master Robin. Robin, I like how you very, you have very varieties in your topics. I thought at first it's just about topics and questions. And there's some questions that go through an interview question for the, our table topic respondents. And each, after each speaker, you give a very uh, simple feedback for them, how they perform as a speech. Uh, they give the speech in, your, in their table topic respondent. I have two point suggestion for you for, to improve as table topic master. Number one is tell them what's the importance of a table topic session. What's the importance of speaking through the cuff? In what session does this table topics applies? Number two, throughout the session, there's a lot of speakers. Remind them to use the word of the day, alliance, as 
throughout the session, only one time has been used. So do take note of this. For our speakers, uh, Arif, I believe you have time to think about what's the importance of role player. Then your minds go wonders. What should I speak of? I do take, I do, I will suggest you to take your time to think through about the topics first before you speak off. And so you have more time to expand on the topics when you're mentioning. When you, you, when you just mentioned through the talk about teams already, halfway through, your mind is stuck. Then you just end up your speech abruptly. Number two, Amelia, the virtue of a high performance teams. Uh, indeed, uh, she is very, have a good, uh, good technique used as she used the Binaker Club as example throughout mm -hmm. through his, her delivery. And she's mentioned that most important is a supportive environment that she needed to, to for the team to grow in a better sequence. Is for her is, I do take note is for her is to the organization of her thoughts in delivering her table topic session. For Noel, how do you build a team trust? How do you build the uh, trust in the team? I believe this is through his attitude in his character and he used his self as example. And he is the only table topic respondent that used the word of the evening in his table, uh, in his response. And for me, for his response is, I wanted to suggest him to use, uh, to show his, uh, what's the word? The confidence in his wife when he is delivering his table in his session. I believe the topics, the confidence in your voice when you're speaking about trust is very important. For Herman, Herman Hadi Lukito, I believe he get that a bit uh, hard about the difference between what he should do, either exercise or coffee. I believe think through the thoughts, organize a thought about exercise, but then tell the story about coffee, what is important to, to what he's want to manage the difference between the two things that we want, or just focus on one for my suggestion. For Apri, uh, this uh, about the bad team player, about his uh, position, I believe that his delivery is very fast because I feel he's very nervous, he's speaking nonstop, like a bullet train, through the way. I would suggest Apri, take your time to speak slowly. There are some things we call pauses and paces. So take your time to pause and manage your pace throughout your speech delivery. For our general evaluator, Tika, that feel intrigued by Robin uh, table topic that she will volunteer herself. And it's about pitching herself. And when you're pitching yourself, go directly to the point, why should you pitch yourself to the clubs or to any organization you want to? Don't explain about the organization to them. Tell them, why do you want this role or this to get into the team? Directly to the point, you have two minutes. Don't waste your time on explaining the whole organization thing. For our guest, Joe, uh, it's a bit hard for me to listen to your uh, delivery just now, but I believe I listened to it in the end. I only able to listen to your conclusion that you believe a teamwork is very important throughout your delivery uh, in, your, in your belief. That's how I feel. And thank you for having me as your table topic evaluator. Back to your general evaluator, uh, Tika. Thank you, Toastmaster Lei, for the detailed evaluation for our table topic sessions. And now we will go to our evaluation session from our accounter, uh, Toastmaster Marendra Dika. Uh, GE, can you give chance to the to the other team member first because I have to fix some things. Okay, Can you? okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so now while waiting for the R counter, we're going to go to our grammarian, Toastmaster Titin, to report, to give a report for her grammar session. Okay, thank you, GE, Toastmaster Tika. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. It is a pleasure listening to your speeches. And now I would like to point out some of the words and sentences that can be improved. For example, let us start with the first one. First one, what did his father say to him? My suggestion will be, what did his father say to him? 
because there is the word did, so we just need to use the verb one, that is say. And the second one, today I'm going to share you. My suggestion will be, today I'm going to share with you. Share plus uh, the word with, and then a person share with you. Next, she just look the man. My suggestion will be, she just look at the man. Okay, with the preposition at and followed by the noun. The next one, she nodding her head. My suggestion will be she nodded her head. We use past form for to nodded because it was uh, telling about something in the past. It, uh, you talk about something that happened in the past, so we can just use past form. Okay, a not becomes a nodded. And the next one, if you cannot express in verbal, my suggestion will be if you cannot express it verbally, okay, we use adverb verbally to modify the verb express. Next, I want you remember. My suggestion will be I want you to remember one plus two and followed by verb one, remember. The next one, if you look Wikipedia, my suggestion will be if you look it up in the Wikipedia, okay, look up, it means to search for some information using some sources such as dictionary or in this case, it is Wikipedia. Next, it can be it any materials. My suggestion will be it was uh, talking about insect that can eat anything. So my, just, my suggestion will be just say it can eat anything. Okay, can plus verb one, that is it. The next one, female cockroach can reproduce asexual. My suggestion will be female cockroach can reproduce asexually. Okay, again, as an adverb to modify the verb reproduce. Next, researcher from Russia has success breeding the animal. My suggestion will be a researcher from Russia has successfully bred the animal. So breed, bread, bread, we use a verb three of the word breed because there is the word has. So has bred the animal and we put the adverb here that is successfully. Next, animal, for animal we use it instead of he. And the next one, to survive and to growing up. My suggestion will be to survive and grow up. So we use verb one that is grow up after the word two, two plus verb one. Next, you are so fluently. My suggestion will be you speak. Okay, so we insert the verb here. Fluently, that is to explain a verb. We can choose a verb, let's say speak. You speak so fluently. Next one, I don't know what the word in English. My suggestion is to add the word is. I don't know what the English word is. Okay, as this one is an indirect question. Next, it's not always mean that. My suggestion is it doesn't always mean that because mean is a verb. So we can use simple present and to be. Okay, to be here because at the uh, in the first sentence there is the word is it requires an adjective or verb in so we can just say it doesn't always mean that next you need to have on mind that my suggestion will be you need to have in mind okay, that and you can continue uh, with your idea Next, we can able to do something. My suggestion is we can do something. Can plus verb one, that is do. Or we can also say we are able to do something. Next, they trust to me and they trust for me. My suggestion will be just simply say they trust me. Next one, I really appreciate he or she. My suggestion is I really appreciate him or her because the position is object of the sentence after the verb. 
And the next one, we gathering in a coffee shop. My suggestion will be we gather in a coffee shop. Okay. Because here gathering, verb plus ing requires to be, that is, is, am, are, or, was, or, were. So we can just say we gather in a coffee shop. And the context is in simple present tense. It, can, it could happen in the past, uh, present, and in the future. Next, we still have several more to go. If we fail, communicate. My suggestion is if we fail to communicate. We can insert the word to after the word fail. Next one, it makes me hard time. My suggestion is it gives me hard time. You have not been spotlight. My suggestion is you have not been spotlighted. Okay, use verb three because we use has or have. Okay. What more surprising me is, my suggestion will be what surprises me more is Next, you start your speech by introduce yourself. Okay, my suggestion is you started your speech by introducing yourself. Okay, and the last one, if I am the interviewer, I will look someone who, and you mentioned the quality of the candidate that you look for. My suggestion is... If I am an interviewer, I will look for someone who, and continue with the uh, characteristic of that person. Look for, it means to search for someone or something. Okay, that's all for the grammatical suggestion for improvement. And I still have the report for the number of times the word of the day alliance are mentioned. Because Master Alvin mentioned the word alliance once, because Master Tika once, because Master Robin once, because Master Like of Wook once, and I apologize for any word of the day that I miss. And I do find wonderful quotes and thoughts that I would like to share with you. The first one is from Master Vivi. It is easy to express love and it's even more beautiful if you can express it. From Toastmaster Andini, we don't need to be the strongest, we just need to be the most adaptable. From Toastmaster Severin, for a team to succeed, we need to build a rapport first. And winning is not for ourselves, but for our team. From Toastmaster Arif, to be a good team player, we need to be ready to support other team members. From Toastmaster Amelia, have the supportive personality. From Toastmaster Noel, or guest Noel, class needs approved. From Toastmaster Apri, communication is very important in addressing some issues. We still have several more to go from Toastmaster Tika. We don't need, we don't learn to be perfect, but we learn to be better. From uh, Guest Geo, nothing is impossible if you are willing to learn. From Toastmaster Arif, one more quote. It is not only about what the message is, but also about how we deliver it. From Distinguished Toastmaster Pipit, it is more important to have interesting content rather than only interesting delivery. And one more quote from her, prepare strong opening to avoid filler words. From Distinguished Toastmaster Natalie, when you write your speech, put in your mind what's in it for the audience. And the last one from Distinguished Toastmaster Natalie, become an HDL, high developed learner. Thank you for all of your speeches. That's all coming from me for the grammarian's report. Thank you. And back to you, GE Toastmaster Tika. Wow, Toastmaster Titin. If there is an award for the best listener, you will get that word. What a detail 
what a detailed report of the grammar and so far. Thank you so much for the detailed report. Now let's welcome to uh, the other report of a counter from Toastmaster Rendra. Thank you very much. G, I would like to share the screen of mine and I hope that you will able to read by yourself. Okay. Yes, okay, ladies and gentlemen, as a counter, I, I already count in my two laptops. Apparently, one of my laptops somehow have an error, and I am ready if in the middle of explaining this, it is blank. So, ladies and gentlemen, a few have known that in terms of using English, you somehow made a lexical error. It is the example like so, yeah, what, now, but, etc. until you know. What does it mean? Actually, this word has no use in the sentence. It is why it is used. It is because maybe it is your habits, kind of behavior or your style. However, to be honest to you, it is not used in a sentence. So according to the lexicals that I'm already, I was counting, the king of who made the most lexical is Toastmaster Alvin. Toastmaster Alvin made about 24 lexicals and the queen is Toastmaster Andini. She has made 18. And in terms for the non-lexical, non-lexical is, it's not is, but are things that not necessarily must be included in a sentence such as a, um, a, a repeated word. For this case, again, the king of this non-lexical is Toastmaster Alvin, and the queen is Toastmaster Andini. It's to my surprise, during my lifetime being a counter, Toastmaster Alvin is the king in entire multiverses. So never worry, Toastmaster Alvin, everyone here in Toastmasters are learning, and I believe you will improve in the next meetings with lowering the use of lexical or non-lexical. To everyone in this meeting, you can see it, and I will give the snapshot of the screen so you can check it out. And if you really curious, you can count it yourself <laughs> using the YouTube that will be made post by the VPPR after this meeting. So I concluded that this meeting, you can learn that the ah is absolutely the most made by the members during this meeting. It was, it were counted like 192. It's a lot. And for the lexical, so is most used by the speaker. It is counted for 70. So that's why it is called a counter because it always and always be the king and a counting measurements. So I give the control back to GE. GE time's yours. Wow. I was speechless. You heard about 100 a counter and you still count it. Very great, well done. Toastmaster Rendra, if there is no one, I will be confused. Which one should I choose between you or <laughs> Toastmaster Ditten? Okay, anyway, so uh, before I continue my general evaluator, G GE evaluation, I would like to call upon our uh, timer first to announce uh, the time for each evaluators. All right, thank you, Toastmaster Ika, as our GE. For evaluation session, um, Toastmaster Arif spent three minutes and 36 seconds. Toastmaster Pipit spent three minutes and 29 seconds. Toastmaster Dian, three minutes and 50 seconds. Distinguished Toastmaster Natalie, three minutes and 23 and Toastmaster Live, four minutes and 27. So two are not qualified, Toastmaster Dian and Toastmaster Arif. And we can vote for 
either Toastmaster Pipit, Distinguished Toastmaster Natalie, and Toastmaster Lai. That's all for timer's report. I will also put it on a chat. Okay, thank you, Timer. And I would like to call upon our ballot counter to launch the polling for each session. Thank you. Okay, I will launch the first polling. The first one is table topic session. Okay, still 85 person participate. Okay, we next to the second polling. Okay. And the last evaluation session, the best evaluator. Okay, back to you, GE Toastmaster Tika. Thank you. Thank you, our lovely ballot counter, Toastmaster Santa. Now, uh, it's my time, uh, the general evaluation session. Uh, actually, it's been such a long time since I last become a general evaluator. Please allow me to have my humble evaluation. So as we see that general evaluator is responsible is responsible to evaluate anything that takes place that takes place during the meeting from the beginning even before the presentation uh, before the meeting until the end of the session and before i would like to highlight some of the great things of today's meeting the first of all before the meeting i noticed that there was a group because this is a joint meeting the group was made for a good communication. So if there was some problem and anything that we need, uh, like for example, the evaluation seat and some of the details of the meeting, it was communicated during the group. It was a really great thing, especially during the joint meeting. And the second one, I, I think that all of this, all this meeting is really well prepared. Why? First of all, there was a great introduction, especially from Vinica online. You had the video explaining about the rules. That's something that we will learn from you. It's very creative. So instead of just saying it, you show the video that that take the interest of the audience. And second of all is the agenda. Agenda is presented in Zoom chat. 
I know that we have this in a group also, but sometimes we need to scroll it. And but you present it in the Zoom chat. It's really, really helpful. And the third one, you have the meeting begin in time, thankfully for our presidents from Vineka and also Pekan Murtos Master and also our lovely Alin and also our second Tom, Ben. And the, all of the role takers, I would say, are amazing. Please unmute yourself and give a round of applause for everyone. Unmute yourself, please. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Great. Well done, every role takers. I love the time. They are very responsive. They don't only talk, but also give uh, some feedback related to what they hear, they heard. And I love the TT table topic session from Toastmaster. I don't know. He's not here anymore. Okay. So from Toastmaster Robin, if I'm not mistaken, the topic are uh, related to the theme and also very it's began with question, role playing, and also statement. And evaluators, all evaluators are giving specific feedback and also our Tosmas table topic evaluation from Tosmaster Lay. I know that this meeting is great. I would give like nine out of 10, but there are things that we can improve as well. The first one is related to the warming session. Uh, some of us came earlier and I noticed that some of us tried to have a conversation, but it was kind of awkward to be honest, because, uh, because there was no conversation, only one person talking to the other person. It would be great if Toastmaster of the meeting or SAA to greet all the audience, especially for the, for the guests also. So we have, uh, we became more, and relax at that time. My, my suggestion is we can have a Q&A session or even better, we can have a word games before the meeting begin. So the audience can relax. Second of all, I love the agenda, but there are some missing information in the agenda uh, like PTE and uh, there are also overlap in time estimation. So I believe that the time estimation can be improved. I saw, I noticed that TTM sessions should start at 8 p.m., but in reality, it started at 7, 14, 9 p.m. It's earlier, but it turns out we take more, we took more time in the TTM session and also evaluation session. And for the role takers, everything was great, but there are things that we can improve. For example, ballot counter. I, uh, is this, it is my humble suggestion, but I would say that the polling is better after each session. So for example, after table topic session, we will have the uh, voting. So sometimes I forgot <laughs> because we have been in the last session, I forgot who is my favorite table topic speakers. So it will be better to have a polling after a session uh, rather at the end. And I love the grammar and I really love it and also a counter, but I know we have a limited time. Uh, so it would be better for the grammar and to focus on points. So it will be more remembered. I'm sorry, grammar and I believe my grammar is not good but what my my point is instead of having lots of words just focus on point for example this is the the grammar in tenses so this is the example or there is uh, some some mistake and object pronoun and give some example but all of those details you can share the report in group so we can uh, limit it we can limit to the time but also give your best for the audience and for the encounter also, that was great. Uh, I would like to suggest you to share it to the group so we can learn together. That's all for me. I love this meeting. And one, one but not least, uh, one, the last but not least is uh, because this is the joint meeting, I would suggest to have a dry run. Why? Because this is the first time we meet each other. Sometimes uh, we have different cultures of the meeting. For example, how to call name. Because I, I was confused whether I should call Toastmaster Ben or Ben. Because usually in Pekan Bar Toastmaster, we call it Toastmaster. But here I noticed that you call, you, you call by name. 
So having a dry run, let's say 10 minutes, so we can 10 or 15 minutes, so we can get to know each other. We can be more relaxed and know more about culture and we can have a better communication. Um, I guess that's all for me. Now, uh, let's welcome to our most awaited session, Toastmasters Present Award. I will call upon our best Toastmaster of the meeting, Toastmaster Aline and Toastmaster Ben. Thank Bye. you, General Evaluator Tika. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Tika. Wow, it was such a great session, yeah. Um, uh, the GE session, the GE session, and also the evaluation session. You know, like I would like to say, uh, first I'd like to say thank you for the GE and also the evaluators earlier. Uh, you know, for uh being a great team player. Uh, because you know, like you, because you yeah, already good supportive feedbacks, right, Ben? Uh, as the teammates, so uh, in their future, we're going to improve our our skills even more better, right, Ben? I agree. We've created a great alliance today, but let's go. We are running a little late than normal. So let's go to our ballot counter so she can tell us who the best speakers are of the oh, day. Yeah. Right? We're going to the present. Drum rolls, please. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, the best four. Okay, there are some voice over, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here they are. Bam. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. All right, Randra. Yes, I'm spotlight first time. And for the uh, certificate to be presented in full. Can you go to the full screen? Yeah. Postmaster Santa. Master Santa, full screen, please. Okay. Okay. Wait. Oh, no worries. <laughs> One, two, wait, wait. Don't, don't chat anything. Yeah, we'll come up in the One, two, three. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So much, Master Pipit and Master Natalie. Congrats to you as the best evaluator. And now, the next present. Uh, the best what prepared speaker or base table top speaker? What do we got, M Madam Ballot Counter? Best speaker award. Best okay. speaker award. Okay, the best prepared. Okay, but the best prepared speaker goes to Toastmaster Rendra. Your voice over. <laughs> yes, the best speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Now, please, for us, welcome. Who is the name? <laughs> okay, gotta click on it. Let's go sometime. Toastmaster and Didi. You gotta click on it. It's not. It's not shown. Uh, it's not shown on this my on my screen. Uh, Toastmaster Santa maybe. Uh, it's so still best evaluator on the screen. Yeah, still best evaluator. Oh. That's Can true. To the best prepared it's... speaker. Just. Is it visible? Uh, yeah, PowerPoint, it does that all the time. Right. Wow, Toastmaster Andini. Come Congratulations, on. Toastmaster Andini. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. And Natalie, uh, be spotlighted again with the previous one because earlier it was not full screen for the for the certificate. Yes, please spotlight Natalie. Spotlight Natalie, please. Okay, one, two, yes. Got it. All right, last one. The last one, the best table topic award. Yes, Table Topic Awards belongs to Toastmaster Tika, ladies and gentlemen, let's give her a round of applause. Uh, congratulations, Toastmaster Tika. Okay, so right. Toastmaster Tika. Yeah. Okay, wait, don't uh, write anything on the chat box. One, two, three. Got it. Done. 
Is it already done to Sunshine Pipit? Okay. All right. Yes. That is it. Great job to the, all the winners and all the speakers. You all did a fantastic job. Toastmaster Alan, what do you think of today's meeting and our oh, alliance that we've created? Oh my God, it is such a great alliance, you know, like uh, uh, I already uh, in love with my club, yeah, the Kanbaru Toastmaster, but now luckily uh, in this joint meeting, I feel, uh, uh, feel, I'm feeling more love with my, my club members and also the Bineka clubs, Bineka online club clubs too, because that we are, we have a great team and we already make a great team player you know we can we, i can consider this as a great uh teams like uh, uh, between binekas and also the pekanbaru toastmaster what a great alliance i'm so happy uh, to take part uh, to take part uh, of this meeting and also be the tom for the first time uh, and do it with you so not do it but yeah collaboration the tom's collaboration with you uh, absolutely yeah. fantastic job thank you toast a master club pick on baru toastmasters club uh toastmaster Alain, great job and just for you guys all of you mothers out there happy international mother's day and we want to actually speed things up usually we'll take comments and all that kind of good stuff and but this has been a late long meeting usually our meetings are about two hours uh, it's been longer than two hours so uh i'm gonna be kind of rude um that's okay with all of you just for the sake of time but i want to thank everyone again and i'm going to conclude this meeting right now thank you very much bye -bye. See you bye. next time thank you so much, you so much thank you yep. bye. great job bye bye everyone bye, bye. 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 Thank you. bye. bye. Have a great Thank evening. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Great evening. Have a great Monday tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I'll end the meeting in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one.